Growing orchids from seeds is a great idea. To do this, we definitely need to purchase the cherry seeds and just plant them. That's what beginners and orchid lovers are thinking. Of course, we are going to go online and immediately find orchid seed offers from different online stores where shady sellers are trying to sell you large varieties of orchids from lady slippers, beautiful vandas, delicate cattleyas, to those that don't exist in nature, such as blue phalaenopsis, and other orchids obtained as a result of Photoshop. As for example, this one, whose Latin name I could not find. It is so simple. Just shop online by pressing buttons and wait for the package to arrive by mail. Well, everything is not as simple as it would seem. First, let's see what an orchid seed looks like. Seeds are formed as a result of pollination of the orchid by insects and ripening occurs in a similar way. For orchid family representatives, in an elongated capsule that is tightly closed at both ends. After the seeds are ripe, the capsule bursts and millions of microscopic dust-like seeds are carried out in the wind. A very small fraction, about one-tenth of these seeds will have a chance to germinate. And the fact that orchid seeds are lacking the endosperm, it means that orchid seeds don't have the necessary nutrients for the germination of a young plant. For its germination in existence, the orchid needs to develop a symbiotic relationship with Mycorrhizal basidiomycetes fungi, mushrooms such as the Boletus family, Rusula, Lactarius, Amanita, and others. It is surprising that mushrooms receive nutrients from trees and transfer them to orchids as if they are nursing them. But what mushrooms receive in return from orchids is not entirely clear and not fully understood. Not all seeds are lucky enough to get to the mycelium of the mushrooms and be surrounded by a caring nanny, which explains the low percentage of orchid germination. In nature, the growth process of orchid seeds takes a very long time about seven to eight years from hatching to flowering on average. In the presence of a nursery mushroom, the orchid can survive in harsh conditions and does not need complete sterility, which however must be observed in laboratory growing conditions. Yes, you heard right. Orchids are grown in a laboratory in flasks under conditions of absolute sterility on special nutrient media in a time that is twice as short as in nature. In laboratories, Mycorrhizal basidiomycetes are not present in the growing process. I think that there is no need to explain why it is not possible to use fungi that form ectomycorrhiza with trees in artificial conditions for germinating orchids. And that's why absolute sterility is needed. Before you decide to start growing orchid seeds, check out the list of nutrients that must be present in an agar culture medium. About 50 kinds of salts, minerals, plant hormones, and carbohydrates are necessary for a very difficult growing process. It takes three to six months for seeds to germinate in the laboratory, and before flowering, it takes up to four years. In addition, any violation of sterility at the very beginning is fraught with death for the entire plant. Well, now let's see what we received in the mail and compare with our seeds. I couldn't wait to get them, and I felt through the package and noticed that something was wrong here. Even to the touch, they are absolutely not orchids. I was always amazed at how you could count 20 orchid seeds. Even under a microscope, this is difficult to do. There are some black seeds in the bag. Let's take a closer look at them. Since when did the endosperm appear in Phalaenopsis seeds? The dimensions immediately indicate that this is a hoax. I want to look at them under magnification and try to identify them. Look at these seeds. I understand now why the Department of Agriculture of Canada and America is calling on citizens not to sow seeds bought from abroad. Moreover, under a microscope, it can be seen that these seeds have nothing in common with any representatives of the orchid family. They are clearly evidently affected by pests, most likely nematodes or larvae. The seeds are covered with mold and it looks like several types of pathogenic fungi at once. I wondered which plant these seeds belonged to, and I started looking. It turned out to be the seeds of the Belumcunda chinensis, belonging to the genus of irises. The seeds of this plant are traditional Chinese spices. It is brilliant. Now I understand why so many of them are mechanically defeated and therefore will never sprout. I want to say, do not fall for colorful photoshopped photos. Do not become victims of deceivers but it is better to study the biology of a plant before starting to grow anything, as well as how to grow this plant, how the species reproduces, read reference books, botany, ask advice from people selling live plants in garden centers, from florists. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any comments or questions you have below and don't forget to subscribe.